Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, Muscle Gain Dieting Made Simple, video number 10, the last one of the series, getting exotically huge. What? I thought that was just a category in adult film searches. In any case, last time in video number nine, we took you through a tour, ended in video nine, it was a nine video tour of the entire process of muscle gain nutrition and now you have the basic tools to get bigger, but what if you want to get exotically big? And the definition we're going to be working here is sort of within 95% of your genetic potential under nearly ideal circumstances. Well, we have a few tips for you. First, it's not for everyone, okay? There's literally no good reason to do it outside of art, okay? I had a fun chat with Eric Helms once where I sort of described, he's like, you know, why are you doing all this to yourself and getting super, super massive? He didn't quite phrase it like that, but it came up. And I was like, you know, it's, it's art to me. Like, it's just like, I get a crazy chest and tricep pump and I'm pretty lean and I flex in the mirror and I'm like, fuck, this is like inspirational shit. It's just amazing. Like you're your own action figure. And if action figures are toys, they're fucking useless. So is most of this shit, except for flexing around. It helps me in jujitsu or whatever. But if I wanted to be the best jujitsu athlete, I would train quite differently. I wouldn't be as muscular. I'd be more technical, faster, et cetera, et cetera. So if someone is like, man, I'm not motivated to get big. And you're like, okay, like, do you want to get big? And they're like, not really. It's like, why the fuck are you getting big? Right? It's a self-solving problem. It's a self-answering question. If you really want to get big, just understand it's for its own sake. And it comes with health downsides for sure. Even for naturals, pushing the very top end of their genetic size abilities means gaining a lot of weight and potentially at times plenty of fat. It's not unhealthy like to the point where it's just gonna drop you dead at age 50, but it comes with some trade-offs, for sure some trade-offs. So just understand that. Just understand that and, and if you know that and you're okay with it, then fine, right? But really think it through. Next, if you really wanna sign up for this, it takes years, okay? For most people to get remotely close to the true potential, it takes about 10 years of training and 10 consistent years, okay? If you don't like the process of training, don't bother. So I will say a huge public service announcement. If you don't like dieting or eating with a purposeful plan and intent, if you don't really like training or it's really like a battle for you, just go do something else, okay? Like, you know, Elon Musk, is he jacked? Who the fuck knows, who cares? He doesn't fucking care. Uh, you know, is, is Shaquille O'Neal jacked? No, but he's worth like $400 million, he's a fucking legend right? Being jacked is cool for its own sake. And that's just about it. So if you're not willing to commit to 10 years and you don't like the process, you don't have a deep sense of enjoyment from it, do it for maybe a little couple of months longer and try to really get a feel for it. If it's something you really want to do, but if it's not gelling, fuck it, right? No sane, rational person ever judges you for not being jacked. Okay. It's not like I, myself and other bodybuilders that are pretty jacked walk around airports and like, look at these fucking normies, bro. Like what the fuck? Like those people are probably great people or, may, or maybe not. Or maybe I'm not a great person. Who knows, right? So it has to be, you have to love the process or at least like the process if you're going to survive to that rarefied air, right? How many people that climb Mount Everest and get to the top don't like mountain climbing? Huh? Maybe zero, maybe one or two ever for the love of God, right? It's got to be something you like to do. Other physical activities tend to interfere in a scaled way. And we have other videos about this with the real pursuit of ex exotic hypertrophy, exotic bodybuilding. So if you really, really love rugby or really love wrestling or really love tennis, you might have to give some or all of that up for some time, maybe for good, if you wanna push that exotic boundary. And if you don't wanna give them up, fuck it, right? But just know that it's gonna take trade-offs, really big ones. And of course, over that time, you should be aiming to move your body weight up slowly. And it gets really, really hard. You do not get to 280 and jacked by not eating a fuckload of food and a lot of times for months and years when you don't want to eat it. And it, it, you're going to be uncomfortable. Seatbelts will fit weird and getting in and out of cars sucks and sleep will get weird and you'll start snoring and all this other crazy garbage. It blows and it gets really hard, but you got to fight through if you want to be jacked. I'm just here to tell you it's not all sort of roses and bunny rabbits. There are some downsides to it. Now, we said in a few slides ago, nearly ideal circumstances, it takes like 10 years. What does that mean? That means plenty of sleep on almost every night. Stress management on point. Don't freak out for no reason all the time. That will not get you jacked. Nutrition almost always on point. 
No disappearing for months on end. You'll see promising bodybuilders that maybe get their pro card or maybe did a local show and won. And people are like, oh, this guy's coming for nationals. And like, oh, where is he at nationals? And he doesn't compete that year. And then the next year he sort of starts training again. And like, what happened? Like, yeah, I got kind of demotivated. Or a lot of times you'll follow bodybuilders on Instagram. They won't post anything on Instagram for like two or three weeks. And they'll make a post like first workout in a while. Had some drama with my girl, but it's all settled now. It's like, what the fuck? Are you a child? Right? If you are an adult who is endeavoring on becoming jacked, you have to have an adult lifestyle. You know how like you made fun of your parents when you were a kid and they all, you know, you you were 13 and you wanted to stay up with your friends till midnight and your friends are like, fine, but we're going to sleep. And you're like, oh, fucking losers. Like mom and dad are actually productive citizens. They actually have a job and you're fucking useless. You go to school and produce almost nothing. Adults produce. Okay. And the production of muscle requires an adult-like lifestyle. One time they asked Jay Cutler what he was going to do after one of his Olympia wins. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to get a little crazier than normal. I usually go to bed at nine. So I'm going to go to bed at 11 tonight. What? It was Jay Cutler, right? How are you going to beat that guy? Um, well, other than Ronnie Coleman and towards the end of his career, Phil Heath, nobody ever really did, right? So that's the thing. You can't just disappear. You can't be inconsistent. You got to be consistently smart and hard at training and dedicated to diet and every little piece of the puzzle if you really want to take a shot at this. That's the best way to do it. Now, Last but not least, full transparency. The biggest guys in the world are on lots of drugs. Okay, the occasional guy takes very little, very few drugs to get big. Most of the guys that you see in the magazines are on like unreal cocktails. Okay, here's the thing drugs aren't magic. Okay, you can absolutely spot a natty on the interwebs, in the YouTube comments, on the Reddit anytime when they say, yeah, man, just fucking take Clen and Tren and Var and you'll fucking blow up. Like, bullshit, you've never taken any of those things. And pushed hard enough, they're like, well, yeah, I mean, I haven't, but I know how it works. No, you fucking don't. First of all, you're only listing compounds that you've read about on the internet. Okay, you never never see Masteron or Primo reference, very rarely. Um, a bunch of other drugs people just so, sort of miss, like NPP. You never see a regular guy on the internet talking about NPP. What the fuck is NPP? Google it, and you'll find out, like, oh, what the hell is that? Well, if you don't know, then you probably have never done a whole lot of drugs, okay? So you really got to watch out from the people that say, like, fucking drugs are magic. They'll do whatever you want. Drugs are highly inconvenient to take. They're annoying as fuck. They really take a massive toll on your health. The more of them you take, the bigger the toll. Tons of massive trade-offs for what? an average of enhanced results that continue to get incrementally slower over time. It's not like when people say dumb shit like, yeah, you got to worry about RAR and shit like that and volume unless you're on drugs, then it's whatever. Bullshit. It's not whatever. It's just more expanded. So if, you know, you used to have to be really, really precise with your training and you started taking drugs, now you can be less precise and get the same results. Who the fuck takes drugs to get the same results? You want better results, so now you get precise again. And then years later, you got to get real precise. You know, it's not like Phil Heath is prepping for Mr. Olympia and he's like, I'm on drugs, fuck it, cheeseburgers. No way, his diet's like super, super strict because everything has to be in place for exotic. Okay, if you want to be a regular guy at a club who has plenty of muscle and eats whatever he wants, yeah, drugs will get you there at a fucking terrible expense to your health. you will be one of those guys that puts Instagram posts at age 36 and being like, in the hospital again, doc says heart's giving out, gonna have to fucking do a GoFundMe. You don't want to do any of that shit. If you're ever going to take a shot at the pharmacology side of things, I have a few tips for you. First, just don't fucking do it. It's probably not worth your time. Legit. You're the average person. It's not worth your time. If you really, really insist, only do it under a few conditions. First, if it's legal in your country. Okay, so as far as I'm aware, in the United Kingdom, for example, anabolic drugs, for the most part, are uh, fine to use for personal use and possess. You're not allowed to distribute them. That's illegal, but you're, but you're fine to use Go to town. Tons of countries in the world when that's fine. Doctor's prescription, totally fine. Okay. Second point, do not do them by yourself. Okay. Don't be like, I'm on Reddit and I bought Anavar and I took it and things happened. Okay. You have no fucking idea what you're doing. A lot of people have done that and paid a huge price for it or just pissed away gains or pissed away a lot of money. You want supervision of a coach and or a doctor. If you need a very good start as to that, Type in Team Evil GSP on your old Instagram there or anywhere on the Google, and you'll find a whole lot of resources behind intelligent approaches to that sort of thing. Okay, and there's tons of other people that can help get a coach and work with a medical doctor to make sure you are good to go. And the doctor supervising means you get regular blood work. Next point, I highly recommend, and this is just person to person, don't do it until you're over age 25 if it's legal in your country. Why? Because up to age 25, Motherfucker, you just graduated high school like a few years ago. You're still putting on a ton of natural quality muscle, okay? And 
To be honest, up until age 25, your brain is not sufficiently mature and you haven't had enough wisdom built up to make really good decisions, big decisions, impactful decisions, like the choice to take special sports supplements or not. When I was age 25, the fuck all did I know what I was doing with my life? Now, mind you, I was like a genius whiz kid or whatever bullshit. I, I was really good at tests. But looking back to the kind of shit I thought when I was like 24, 23, yeah, I was a sharp kid, but I made all kinds of fucking crazy mistakes. So if I had started, like, I know guys who started taking drugs when they were like 16. Holy fuck. Thank God I did not have access to that or thought it was a good idea or whatever. Confluence of variables kept me away from that. Age 25. And like, here's the thing. If you're not making consistent gains up till age 25 and you need drugs to get you anywhere, don't take drugs at all because you're not going to amount to shit when you take drugs if you weren't shit natty. If you're pretty fucking jack natty, you may go places when you take drugs. If you're a dog shit natty, what are drugs going to do? Unless you're the one in a thousand crazy outlier that drugs just spark this new generation of growth, you're just going to have, you're going to be a guy who takes a lot of drugs and people are like, you natty, right? And you're like, uh, no, but I guess I look natty. You don't want to be that guy. Age 25. Makes your, means you're mature, means you've put in the work and you've proved to yourself that like, I'm going places natty at 25, maybe after 25, I can go places not natty. And lastly, only after about eight years minimum of natural training, because you're still getting really great results. If you can put on ton of muscle, 90% of the muscle you ever put on, uh, or 90% of your natural potential natty, that's amazing. Then you hop on or whatever, if that's your choice, you already have a ton of muscle. You put on a really healthy way without any side effects or worries or bullshit or costs. Then you could just layer cake on top of that. But some guys, like I legitimately know people that started lifting, they were 140. When they got to 145 pounds, they started using drugs. Where does that train even go? That's fucking crazy. If you could have gotten to 180 off drugs, oh my God, the sky's the limit. But a lot of people start way too early and it's really, really fucking stupid. And I 100% will judge the fuck out of you if I meet you in your life and you've been training for two or three years and you're using drugs. Outside of very special circumstances, you have like super low endogenous testosterone. I'll give you the squint. Mm, uh, all right. So those tips are about all I have. Do your best if you want exotic size. Be consistent, be patient, and no matter your muscle size, enjoy the journey and enjoy yourself, enjoy being alive, because getting big only guarantees that you'll get big and be big. It does not guarantee happiness. I know a lot of folks who get in to the muscle game, you know, we all fight off our demons and that's why we're in the gym and that's totally cool. And they go in there for a variety of different reasons. Oh, I'm going to get girls. Girls actually just mostly date skinny hipsters that have confidence and talent. Don't give a fuck. Uh, you know, if you have all those shits, you get, you know what I'm saying? You get girls when you're jacked or when you're skinny. It doesn't really matter. Uh, being big will solve very few problems for you outside of the problem of not being big. And if you want it to make you happier or get you laid more or anything else like that, then uh, you got to just go and, and look into those things for yourself. If you want to get big for its own fucking sake, the dedicated, those of you who are watching know exactly what I'm talking about. That's all getting big is ever has to get you, right? See you next time and you better be bigger. Peace.